could buy a heavy burden Neath a load of guilt and shame Then the hand of Jesus touched me my soul something happened and now I know he touched me and made me whole since I met this place it's since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. I'll shout it as he turned it Hello everybody and welcome to this morning's program from the Pentecostal Holiness Church here in Whithorn. And here comes David. And live streaming. Live we are no longer <laughs> live streaming. We are live. Now we move back a bit here. Yes, Then dear. our wonderful congregation at home. And guess what? We have a congregation, congregation here, here in Whithorn. Hallelujah. So we there. now two people have attended live our program. One Robert from Sydney, Australia. And now Pam from Odd. Uddersfield, because you dropped their H's in Yorkshire. Uh, Uddersfield, uh, as people will know in this area, uh, who that are dairy mean, farmers, because they come uh, from Uddersfield, <laughs> you see. I was just going to uh, make that joke. Actually. You were. I beat you, you, you to it. My joke. I beat you to it. Yeah. So there we are. We're going to start with our Bible class, as you know, our Pentecostal Holiness Church. Each Sunday live, and we've started live a little late today. Apologies for those of you who are waiting for the live steam at 10 o'clock. We started at 20 past 10, but we're not moved by the natural, are we, no, Lindsay? We are not. Well, sometimes and, we are. And, <laughs> choo, choo. Uh, and the train is now setting up. Choo, choo, choo. <laughs> live steaming. Yeah, 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 very good, Lindsay. Very good. Give a little bow. Give a little bow. There we are. Very this good, is not a good. curtsy. Yeah. Usually right. ask for a <laughs> That's right. This is for all the people who are the, uh, what do you call it, people in the so-called Christian world who treat women as being inferior. So what we do, Lindsay, and I have a little joke when such people come and visit us, and Pam isn't one of these people, what we do get them, that I say to them, it's very important that when a mm -hmm. woman comes in a room, when there's a man in the room, that the woman does a little curtsy. This is what the, and it's just a wind up between Lindsay and I, so as to hit this religious yeah, thing, in isn't fact, it? Actually, yeah, actually, this is a special part of the program called the courtesy call. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's right. Right. Can't say, can't say Paul, people who believe it, honestly. <laughs> there we are. Thank you, Lindsay. I'm Michael here. and Stan there, who are equal joint heir with Christ. Remember, a woman is a joint heir with Christ. It means equal with Christ, okay? Not inferior to a man, are you, Lindsay? No, definitely not. That's, <laughs> that's so, different. Particularly when they're born in Glasgow, they're not. I can <laughs> tell you that, but not there. Well, Lindsay, if I stand there, and you go there, and right. I speak to the people here, and hopefully we haven't lost any of our audience. Father, we come in the name of Jesus, knowing the joy of the Lord is our strength. As we begin this part one of our Bible class today, part two being our Pentecostal Holiness Church service, and part three being revival prayer. Father, we come in the name of Jesus today, knowing the victory has already been won 2,000 years ago, and we are declaring it today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. We love to have fun, but there are times in our lives where we go through battles. And in our morning service today, we'll be dealing with how to overcome the battles of life. Now, what is important is that we understand, as Lindsay has just sung, shackled with a heavy burden. Neath the load of guilt and shame, then the hand of Jesus touched me, and now I know I am no longer the same. When we are at peace, when and oftentimes during the day, so much is going on that makes it difficult to hear from the Spirit of God. And if we recognize this, if we recognize there are times when we can be so close to God, oftentimes these are during the nighttime hours where it's quiet, there's no phone calls, there's no texts, there's no emails which you're dealing with and the thousand and one things we deal with in everyday life. We can then be hearing from God. At that time, it's important to write down what God is is saying to us the bible says write the vision and in the appointed time we shall move with it now over the last four weeks we have been presenting in our bible class our course on jesus the healer the introductory course being how to be led by the spirits of god we began first with spirit consciousness then spirit and soul, then the inward witness. And last week we covered the issue of the fleece, where people look for a natural phenomena to occur so as to prove this is God. Well, this will get you into trouble. It was even an exception in the Old Testament in relation to Gideon. But people use fleecing commonly. Now remember when it comes to physical phenomena, the God of this world will provide because he is the God of the physical realm. Now when we start moving by the Spirit, we have authority over the God of the physical realm. And the last thing we want to do is our notes on the fleece will give you. If you want copies of these, you can get them. Um, from ECCTV for 219 at gmail.com. Just to cover the point from last week, remember the promise that came through Ezekiel chapter 36. A new heart also will I give you. A new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. But this is a spiritual ability enabling us to walk in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus above the realm of the God of this world over whom we have every authority, every power, every dominion, that at the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus meaning that who is within us. The Bible says, greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. So when we start applying the pressure on the devil, 
When we start moving in peace, when we start moving in God's glory, we start moving in an authority which is of a spiritual domain. And we are constantly, as we come to part five of this introduction course, How to Be Led by the Spirit of God, which is entitled The Witness and the Inward Voice, this becomes our life. Now, on earth, God has created us male and female. I apologize to all those who think otherwise, but I don't think there's been a midwife yet who has found anything else but a male and a female. Now, when we start moving in the things of God, the soulish realm starts coming under subjection to that which is of the Spirit. So where we get all these issues today over what sex am I, what gender am I, this is all of the soulish realm because it relates to the feelings and passions and lusts of this world. But when we become spiritual beings, we know that God created the heavens and the earth and God created male and female, created he, them and nothing else. What is described as something else? Now listen to this. Piers Morgan on Good Morning Britain, who seems to be accepting at this time there's about 25 different genders or whatever, you are a fool. Because you're moving in a realm of reaction to what the God of this world wants you to think. Because he is the author of confusion. And if ever there is a world today where there is confusion, it is here amongst us in Great Britain and in other Western countries too. When we deal with Asia, South America and Africa, we deal in a different context. But in Western countries, people don't even know whether they're male or female. They don't even know that a man marries a woman. Because there's other kinds of marriage. And when we start moving in the things of God, when it deals with a man and a woman coming together, the Bible describes this union as Christ and his church. And it is in this context, there is neither male nor female. So when it comes to the issue of women's ministry, we 100% ban it in this ministry. When it comes to men's ministry, we 100% ban it. Because we are all spiritual beings, whether male nor female, doesn't matter. For the heart of God reigns in the born again believer, whether it be or he or she. And that which comes out of our mouth is of the Savior and the Savior alone. The Bible says we are crucified with Christ. We live yet not I. So the I becomes the him. So the woman within the earthly context becomes speaking as Christ, 1 John 4, 17, as he is, so are we in this world. So why should the Bible say that the sons and daughters shall prophesy? Who shall they prophesy but him? Why does the Bible declare New Testament prophetess in Anna? Why does the Bible declare that Priscilla uh, corrected the Alexandrian preacher? And we are still correcting Alexandrian preaching today, which is why we're here in Whitton, where the local Kirk preaches from Alexandrian scriptures. What are we here to do, whether we be male or female, is bring that correction, and that correction we will do. And our Bible class today is all about the witness and the inward voice. Psalm 18, 28, which is in our notes. If you would like these notes, they're free. Email ECCTV for 219 at gmail.com. Psalm 18, 28. For thou wilt light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Now when we understand within the context that the spirit of man 
is the candle of the Lord. Man being mankind. In this college, we still use that term, mankind, meaning man and woman. We don't have to be stupid and use the term humankind, which is bowing down to the new world or the deep states who want to bring the confusion over gender. It's a crazy world. Now, I want to come out of that crazy world and move by the inner witness, don't you? Moving by the power of God, dominion of God, not being bound by political correctness. Now, Lindsay, will you just come up here a moment? We're getting some sound interference here. And whilst I look to try and fix it, you know, you just share from Romans 8, 13, 17 here about living by the Spirit. I'll be back in just yes. a moment. yes. Okay, everybody. Now, when I was a, a school teacher a few years ago, this is relevant, by the way. I used to uh, do um, what was called RS or religious studies, religious instruction, just to a basic level with uh, the girls. I look, we're made in the image of God. Can you just stop a moment, just checking the sound? All good. You carry on. Okay, we're made in the image of God. Now, God is a Trinity, a three in one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Agreed? Three in one. And we in the same way are created in his image. How are we created in his image? No, we don't all have white beards or anything silly like that. We are created in his image because we are also three in one. We are spirit, soul, and body. And this is what is being talked about in Romans 8. Yeah, you go for it, Nancy. Um, so if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But this is the only part of uh, the human three-in-one made in the image of God being that will live forever is the spirit, not the soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions, basically, and not certainly not your body. Yeah, so we're just into let's this read now. this again. You go for it. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, that means mortify means put to death the deeds of the body. Ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. Because you know what? There's another verse in Scripture in the New Testament that says that Christ Jesus is the firstborn of many brethren. See? So it's not just him. He is the firstborn from the dead, but he has adopted us. And, you know, it says that we are joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. There is death and resurrection in this. And there's no gender, physical gender issue no. here. That the word of the Lord can come through what we would call a man or a woman mm. equally. That's why we have an equal ministry here. Mm. Why the Bible College mm. of Wales from the 1920s always trained women into ministry. Mm. And that is the way it's going to be and will always be. Mm. And those who look to place us on the bondage by using scripture out of context need to understand they're quenching the spirit when mm. they're suppressing the voice which comes through a woman, as we would call in the natural senses. Because within that woman is the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, mm -hmm. is within every born again believer, and suppressing women away from ministry is an act of quenching the spirit. Absolutely, and that obviously applies to children as well. Of because Jesus very said, much suffer so. the little children. Such is the kingdom of God, whether they be girls or boys. Exactly. Amen. Lindsay, thank you so much. I think I fixed the sound interference. I just do a final check. Don't want humming behind me. 
except the hum of the Holy Ghost, of course. Praise God, we're fine. We're coming back to part one. Those of you who have our notes, the witness. Thou wilt light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. We need to understand how to read and use the word of God. There are two Greek words, rhema and logos. Rhema, as Vine's expository declares, is the Holy Spirit bringing back to remembrance that which we have learned. Why we run a college is because the Bible declares study to find yourself approved unto God, which is why we have this teaching session before every Pentecostal Holiness Church meeting right now so we can encourage the study of the Word of God so we can grasp it, embrace it because this is a supernatural power this is what leads us to perfection and it's this we will be dealing with in our morning service this morning that when we start believing and understanding that we walk as led by the Spirit of God, as Lindsay has just declared, we are a joint heir with Christ. We are as Christ Jesus himself. So when those who are infirm and sick come to us, we can expect not only the same results, but Jesus promised the greater things shall follow those who believe. What does that mean? It means that now he has resurrected from the dead. And the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell within us. The resurrection power is within every man and woman who has accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. Can you say amen? amen. Because with this power we move. That is why we are so used to miracles in this ministry. Because we know who we are. We don't differentiate between man and woman. We see each person as containing the person of the Holy Trinity. Because in Christ is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And this being the case, all the authority, all the power is within every born again believer. As in Mark 16, to cast out devils and to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But we need to understand the differential between the rhema and the logos. What the religionists would do is look to place you under bondage using scripture by the letter. I was watching Good Morning Britain this week again with Piers Morgan, whose knowledge of scripture is practically nil, Yet he was taking part in a discussion in which it was said that in instead of changing water into wine, what Jesus would do on earth today is change a man into a woman. You don't know what you're talking about, Morgan. It's time you get a hold of the true word of God instead of those Catholic scriptures you were brought up with from Alexandria, Egypt. I'm telling you this, and I dare you to invite me on your program, because I tell you straight to your face. You think you were clever making mincemeat out of Dr. Makarath during the week. Now, I'm telling you this. He was very gentle on you, but I won't be so gentle. To try and say he was a bigot because he was supporting the concept of a man or a woman. Well, I'm sorry that even in the natural realm you're stupid to start thinking there is anything else but a man or a woman. Yes, there are soulish thinkings. There are soulish lusts which is what you're talking about. But you did not in your program differentiate between the tripartite being, a body, soul, and spirit, for which you are clearly ignorant. And when you start coming against those who move by word of knowledge, you better watch out because we'll be saying the things you will not want to be heard. 
Now the tripartite being, body, soul, and spirit, when a man is born again, he's saved by the spirit. And when we say man, we include woman, mankind. Today you've got to explain this so carefully. Because the basic is not understood. And what the natural man does is operate through the letter of the law. But the Bible says Christ has redeemed us by the letter from the letter of the law. Being made a curse for us. That through him, which is what Dr. Macrat was trying to say, we walk in his righteousness rather than that of our own. And that righteousness transfers from our spirit to our minds, the renewing of the mind, Romans 12, and to our bodies, Romans 8, which then come in line with our spirit. And we walk in such victory and such power that we are anything but a bigot, as you accuse Dr. Makarath of being. We become the manifestation of Jesus Christ who was totally in obedience to the Father. And it was the Pharisees who started hitting Scripture at him in a way which did not understand the heart of Christ. And so the inward witness gives us the heart of Christ in the application of law because scripture is in the context of wisdom being above knowledge and what we find on our television screens like through Piers Morgan is an intellectual bias over that of the spirit and a use of scripture incorrectly by looking to place Dr. Makarath on the law rather than the understanding of the spirit for Dr. Makarath was attempting to be able to bring understanding of the basic tenets of faith that God created male and female which Piers Morgan, you as a Roman Catholic, seem to reject. Now, who is the stupid one? The rhema of God is the Holy Spirit bringing to remembrance from our spirit that which we have learned to speak out at a given time. And away with this milky Christianity which doesn't stand for the basic tenets of faith which brings about an understanding of all philosophies brings about an understanding of all sins and look to bring it together in a Gnostic church which is 95% of what we call church in Britain away with it a return to by the spirit conviction is what we are all about. And we have a heading here in our notes, the importance of waiting on God for the inner witness, quoting Isaiah 28, 16. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, he that believeth shall not make haste. Now your new Bibles came about through two spiritualists called Wesker and Hort, who were pro-Darwin. They were pro-evolution. And we have the direct primary evidence of this. And so you have now a new force within what's known as Christianity of acceptance of the lusts of the flesh rather than the conviction of it. And it is those moving by the Spirit who bring that conviction who are constant, constantly ostracized, constantly have legal actions taken against them because the Spirit is constantly at war with the flesh. Now part two of our notes takes us to the inward voice. 
Quoting Romans 9 and verse 1, those of you who have the notes, Lindsay, have you not got the notes? I made two copies for you. You left it up here. Lindsay's looking for her notes here. Has she gotten them up here? I don't have them up here. You have to, must have put them down. My goodness, my goodness. She's looking for the notes, but the notes are not there. Never mind. The inward voice, part two. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. It is important that we be at peace to enable us to hear from the spirits of God. Now, my dear wife has emotions on occasions. Now, if you are a fella out there, have you a wife with emotions? Oh, no, my wife is moving by the Spirit of God constantly and never expresses an emotion. Oh, no, my husband just moves by the Spirit of God constantly, has no emotions at all. You are both of you <laughs> are blooming liars. <laughs> there is times we express emotion. I once refereed a so-called Christian football match with Christian pastors. And I'm telling you, you can look so self-righteous in the pulpit, but put guys together playing football or rugby, and you might hear one or two sweary words you wouldn't expect from them. I remember red carding more than one so-called pastors and sending them off the pitch for sweary words because my view was if it's a Christian football match. We should not be hearing the sweary words. But that's a human emotion of the soulish nature. And each and every one of us has to address that every now and then. And so... From the renewing of the mind from our spirit, we start forgiving. Now, I've learned when I'm driving along the road, haven't I, Lindsay, who's listening to this now, if someone comes and cuts me out, I just go like this. And it's a discipline. Now, my wife, Lindsay, was born in Glasgow. And Glasgow wifeys have difficulty in driving along the road when someone cuts you out. Now, do you see where I'm coming from here? And we are called to move constantly by the inward voice. Romans 9.1, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. Now, have you been driving along the road and you've come out, oh Christian, with the odd sweary word to someone who's cut you out on the road? Have you then regretted us? Have you then say, sorry, Lord, I forgive that person? But is it a process? We're going to be dealing with this in the morning service. Now, we don't want to be seen here as self-righteous Christians. We have them come to us on many occasions and they drive us not. The Bible says, confess your faults one to another that ye may be healed. And these are the faults of the soulish nature. And when we come together and open up and express our faults, the, and we'll be dealing this in revival prayer today, you know our vessel becomes clean for God to fill. And it's a process and it's important to be in forgiveness mode. It's important to have nothing against anybody. It's important to be at peace, proper rest, so that you are in readiness to hear the inward voice. Psalm 127 verse 2. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Now we have books here by a Dr. Lillian Yeomans, who was a medical doctor, who talks about what happens during sleep and how the sleep process, this being a medical fact, can dramatically affect the health of our bodies. 
God has given us sleep. He's given us rest. He's given us opportunity in peaceful conditions to hear from them. Because when the emotions are going around, it's a barrier to hearing from God. Are you with me? So we're being real today. This isn't your heavy religious stuff of the Pharisees. This is real Christian teaching in our Bible class. Don't come here and say, oh, I've never lost my temper in my life. I tell you, Lindsay's dad only once lost his temper in her remembrance, and that was when she shot him up the backside with a bow and arrow, and he was so surprised that this dear army major exploded and probably gave her the biggest smack bottom she'd known in all of her life. Because it is important to understand that we all can be tempted. We all can come under pressure to lose our tempers and we have all failed but there comes a time when we can open up to God and express our faults and he brings us a healing and a relationship of pure purity that we become partakers of his divine nature. Father we thank you for our Bible class today the witness and the inward voice how to hear the inward voice is by not being religious, but by being honest and being open to you and confessing our faults unto you and to each other so that there is a unity in the church meeting where we all know that there's been times when we failed, but that we all know too that by confession, the Spirit of God fills us the empty vessel to be the manifestation of Christ on this earth. So Lindsay is going to come forth now and sing two songs. And then we're coming into our morning service, which is going to expand on what we've been talking about today. Here is Lindsay. Are you kept you cool now? <laughs> I've really had it this morning, haven't I? You know, I got told not, off. Not a red face, I got but told not off because I'd apparently lost my notes. And I actually, he's standing here with a whole pile of them. Nah, one of which this must one. be not mine. That. Oh, yes, he was. You left it here, my dear. Sorry, dear. Oh, I am so. I confess my <laughs> fault <laughs> one to you, dear, my dear. There you are. You see it all in practice <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, that's right. Practical Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone now. Oh, I'm gone now. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, come and sing <laughs> to us. <laughs> See you later. Okay, oh, folks. And, well, this, I'm about to welcome you to this morning service, which is the second part of the threefold program. You see, three and one. There you are again. Tripartite. Oh, I can't see it now. Tripartite program. And it's weird. Oh, here, oh, here we go. Because as they say in these parts, he's bigger as me. <laughs> Not than, but as. And there we are. We're all different and we speak a different language. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. God sent his son. Oh, gosh, I've got a rival singer there in the backing track. <laughs> I got the wrong job. Oh, I see. I've been sacked from the singing as well. Very well, good, Lindsay, dear. I, 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 I had to express my fault to you, my dear. My dear, dear I Lindsay. forgive you, dear. I, 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 <laughs> we're getting the right track this time. Are you ready, Lindsay? Okay. Sing again. Okay. She's got, got the words. Oh, God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, to heal and forgive, he lived and died. My Savior lives Because he lives I can face tomorrow Because he lives All fear is gone Because 
Yes, dear viewers and listeners, there's so much fear all around us these days, isn't there? Not just fear of dying, but fear of, of, of man instead of fear of God. We should fear God, you know? The, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, it says in the book of Proverbs, because he's the one that holds our futures. And in the words of the song, holds the whole world in his hands. So let's not fear what man can do to us. Not even fear Monday morning and what it's going to bring tomorrow. But put our lives completely in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now I welcome you again to the second part of our program which is the morning service from the Pentecostal Holiness Church. And please make this choice this morning in the words of this song. I'd rather have Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus than silver Gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or land. I'd rather be led by his nail pierced hand than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin stretch away I'd rather have Jesus than ever 
this world of ours today. I'd rather have Jesus than man's applause. I'd rather be faithful to his dear cause. I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true to his holy Of rarest bloom, he's sweeter than honey from out the comb. He's all that my hungering spirit needs. I'd rather have Jesus. And let him lead Not to be the king Of a vast domain Or be held in secret sway I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. This world affords today. I'd rather have she. Praise the Lord, Lindsay. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. This is a lovely day that the Lord has made. Indeed. Indeed. You know, is there any more faults you'd like to mention, Lindsay? No, in, everybody? Yeah. No, 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 no. It's only about the sound equipment. Here. I know, I know. We've sorted sound that one faults, out. Sound faults, you know. Well, welcome if you just joined us on live stream, not live stream. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Pentecostal Holiness Church. Comes live from 10 o'clock. Usually, today, a little late. 10 o'clock on Sundays in three parts. Part one, Lindsay, is... Ooh, how to be led by the Spirit of God. It's a Bible study. Right. That's the introduction to the Jesus the Healer course, which in its main part starts next week. Mm -hmm. Then the Pentecostal Holiness Church morning service, the which preaching of which is about to begin. And then you come and sing the song again. And then at the end of that, we have our introduction to revival prayer, genuine revival. Amen. Amen. All right. You go there. <laughs> and I go here and welcome you all back in Jesus' mighty name. Now, we are here today looking at the letter of James, as Lindsay might like to get a Bible for our congregation today. There's some at the back there. And we're in the letter of James. Now, this is so important to those of us who want to move by faith and faith alone. And move also, not with being pressurized in relation to our own faith. Now, how many of you have been pressurized in relation to your own faith? James begins. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Now this is so important when we come to verse 2, because we're dealing with diverse temptations. How many of you go through the battlegrounds of life being tempted this 
written that way, our feelings going all over the place, not knowing what to do, some people telling us this, some people telling us that, all kinds of pressures like we have had to put up with in this ministry. When you preach the word of God, you will come under real pressure. Didn't we cover a couple of weeks ago in John's gospel? Is it chapter? the 16 Lindsay where it reads that those who will deliver you to authorities will be those who believe they are doing God's service this is in John's gospel chapter 16 where Jesus declares these things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended so the first thing that comes against you who are people who are, are offended we know we've offended the local church here at Whitton and what they have done is look we have heard to pray against us from a spirit of offense well we're not called to be offended we're called to be open and transparent and confess faults one to another so that the empty vessel can then be filled by the Spirit of God. And this is our heart in this ministry. But they, look at verse 2, shall put you out of the synagogues, yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. This is what happened in the Maccas Peninsula. At the stake at Wigtown, two ladies, Margaret McClacken in her 60s, Margaret Wilson, age 18, declared that as we covered in our course this morning, that they themselves without a bishop could hear from the spirits of God and declare the lordship of Christ Jesus for which the bishops came down upon them the Anglican system at that time under the control of the Roman Catholic Church took them aside saying to declare that there be a barrier between them and Christ Jesus they could not do this and they tied them to a stake on the Wigtown Flats which was then tidal and at that stake was covered in water they gave them every opportunity to recant Jesus Christ they would not do it and those who drowned them believed they were doing it in the name of God such is the saying today in North Wales when we ministered from there we received texts in 2010. We will destroy you through official channels. Who did it come from? Those who believed they were threatening us in the name of their God. We were taken to extremes. Put under a charity commission investigation. Costing this ministry. And Lindsay and I personally thousands and thousands of pounds in legal trees in threats in having to pay for this and having to pay for that rather than use the resources for the every creature commission those who are operating in the name of their christ threaten us even to the point of putting us into a room with an Islamic barrister saying, if unless you pay £9,000 and say nothing in court, then we will destroy not only you, but your ministry. We have had this time after time again from those doing this in the name of God. Not your atheists, not your ordinary people. They actually love us because we're real it is those with this form of self-righteousness now the true christian has to face what the bible calls in verse 2 of chapter 1 of james diverse temptations this is that which looks to take you off the course removing by the inner witness this is the fleshly realm we all have. 
but does not make us a sinner saved by grace. That's a lack of understanding of the tripartite being. We are body, soul, and spirit. When we're born again, it is our spirit that gets saved. And our soul, through the watching of water by the word, which is why we're word of God ministry here, it makes us perfect. What does the word say? Verse 4, let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. How dare you call that which has been chosen of God to be perfect a sinner? Verse 6. Let him ask in faith. Well, what did Paul say to the Galatians in chapter 2 and verse 20? I am crucified with Christ. I live, yet not I. In other words, his soulish nature had come under subjection to his spirit. The I is referring to the soul, the soulish nature of man, which becomes crucified with him. The spirit being made perfect, at regeneration, at being born again. Remember Nicodemus and Jesus, John 3, were born again by the Spirit. Our soul is washed by the preaching of the Word of God. Our bodies are brought in line with our spirit because the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell within us shall quicken our mortal bodies. So we have an entirety at the cross of Christ, body, soul, and spirit. Did he die for us? That we should be made perfect. But the perfection of the soul, we have to let patience run its perfect course. And within that course comes the trying of our faith, Lindsay and Pam, through diverse temptations. Have you got it? Yes. <laughs> but those who ask in faith do not ask by their own faith, but by his faith. Let's analyze Galatians 2 verse 20. Paul said, I live by the faith of whom? The Son of God. In Habakkuk it reads, the just shall live by his faith. And so this faith doesn't have to be emotionally souped up. This is the faith of the Son of God. And it can take you at times, as what happened with the Apostle Paul, into trance-like states. I was ministering during the war period in Sri Lanka. At a place called Andhrapura, a Buddhist stronghold. A wonderful church with a postman leading it as the pastor. Oh, yeah. And I was stood standing there and it was the war and the people had suffered so dreadfully. And they brought to me a young man, possibly war injured, who had no eyes. Now, when you're moving in the power of God, we have to move with non-wavering faith. The natural man, on seeing another man with no eyes coming for healing, I want to see, Pastor. Now, are you going to allow the faith of the Son of God to manifest? Because in ourselves, our faith is limited. And I literally expressed a normal expression. I looked at a young man and I said, Oh my God. And God immediately spoke to me. He said, yes, I will take over. 
And what came out of here had nothing to do with my faith, but everything to do with his faith. I live by the faith of the Son of God. And spoke. the Lord spoke through me and said, Eyes grow in the name of Jesus. And immediately before my eyes, these eyes started to grow in this young man's sockets. And there was witness, my own son Matthew was there, wasn't he, Lindsay? You was there too. And you saw it happen too. And eyes grew in these young man's sockets, eye sockets. My God has all the spare parts. Don't ever move by your faith in the soulish realm. I said, oh my God, expression of the soulish realm. Yes, I'll take over. And from the spirit, my mind was renewed by his faith. The faith of the Son of God. Eyes grow in the name of Jesus. I have people in Britain when I tell this, to, I can't believe that, they say. Why? Because they're not spirit beings. They're of the soulish realm and look to place natural phenomena and moving of God. That's the problem with the church here in Whitton all over the country. It rules by the natural realm of the soulish understanding, except the fact we're sinners saved by grace and all that bunkum which comes from the pulpit today of textual criticism of the school of theology and Alexander. Alexandria, Egypt, which keeps the people under slavery and bondage rather than sets them free by the power of God. And it's with the power of God we move through confessing our faults, through understanding our inability, that when we reach the point of understanding it's not us, I'm crucified with Christ. I live yet not I. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Then greater things shall follow those who believe. Why? Because in Jesus' earthly ministry, he hadn't yet won the victory over the devil. We have the victory over the devil in our hearts. And it is that we apply when we accept our soulish nature will get us nowhere. God takes over, fills the empty vessel, anoints the soulish realm with his word. That's why it says here, verse 22, be ye doers of the word. Do what Jesus says. Who is the word but Jesus Christ? Not hearers only. Deceiving your own selves, verse 22. For if any be a hearer of the, of the word and not a doer, it's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Let me tell you this, when you hear from God, you hear from God. When you speak out his word, you know and know and know. And this is far more powerful than just praying for people. Jesus never prayed for one person in his earthly ministry in the context of healing. He prayed that they be one as we are one. But when it came to the ministry of the sick, I did not pray for this young man to have eyes. Jesus took over me. I became him and spoke the word. I became the doer of the word. We have no end of stories like this. One after another of healing miracles. Our healing course is for the people of Witton to understand they don't have to die early. And they can go forever to be with Jesus Christ washed by the blood of the Lamb. They overcame him by what? The blood of the Lamb. And the word of their testimony, testimony I have given today. And in John's Gospel, chapter 15, Jesus, one of the great ego amies, I am in Greek, declared, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him. Because this is the covenant, the new covenant that he has chosen us to live in. That's why the Bible calls us the temple of the Holy Ghost. We are the holy of holies of the risen Christ. 
What a power. What a testimony. What a glory. Jesus declared, abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. Are you abiding in the vine today? And what will happen? Jesus declared, verse 18, if the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. This religious spirit, which is all around us, will constantly come against us as it did against the covenanters. Why this ministry was built on the foundation through Reese Howells of the sacrifice of the shed blood of the martyrs. And when we come to our revival prayer understanding section, part three of our Pentecostal Holiness Church, we'll be dealing with how Presbyterians became not sinners saved by grace, but clean vessels for God to move. Can you believe it? Father, we thank you for this time together in your word this morning. We know it is a word to be spoken forth as the rhema of God for this hour all over the world. That if ye abide in me, I abide in you. And that we shall ask what we will and it shall be given unto us in the mighty name of Christ Jesus. And as Lindsay comes again to sing, I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. Will you give your life to him today? Will you become born again? Will you be washed by the blood of the Lamb? Or will thou continue in the soulless realm, even of a religionity, which is not of God, but of the God of this world who looks to bind you on the self-righteousness and the letter of the law rather than the liberty and freedom of the Spirit. Lindsay, come and sing again and then we'll come into our third section which is on revival prayer, the introduction to saying the lessons of the Hebridean revival. Lindsay, come forward. Yes. Thank you so much for that. Really, it was very, very powerful preaching on the authority of the believer, who we really are in Christ. Not the fables of dead religion, but the living word of God. And yes, the choice today, I'd rather have Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be His than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or land. I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hand than to be the king of a vast domain or be I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. I'd rather have Jesus than I'd rather be faithful to his dear cause. I'd rather have Jesus than a world 
quite fame I'd rather be true to his holy name He's fairer than lilies of rarest blue He's sweeter From out the cold He's all that my hungering spirit needs I'd rather have Jesus And let him lead Than to be the king Than anything this world affords today. This world affords today. I'd rather. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Now, Lindsay, 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 I'm just coming up, viewers, for our third part of our Sunday morning marathon mm -hmm. meeting, the Pentecostal <laughs> Holiness Church. Part one is Lindsay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. <coughs> A Bible she, study. She How to be led by the Spirit of God, leading on to next week, the main part of the course, Jesus the Healer. Right, part one and part two. The morning service. And part three. Revival prayer. She remembered. Hey, Lindsay, Lindsay, Lindsay. Go and sit down with our audience today, which is Pam. <laughs> Amen. Now, I've got papers here all over the place. Here we are. <laughs> oh, this is all the rest of us here. Back goes there. Because we're coming to a very important part of our morning meeting of three parts and this is study of the book the price and power of revival and this is a series of messages given through duncan campbell about the hebridean revival and what is very significant like here in whitton it came through a very small in effect presbyterian church in Barvis, um, of the United Free background, where they moved out of the nonsense of sinners saved by grace to believe that they had become clean vessels for God to move. And there was fruit of this. They asked these questions, are my hands clean? Is my heart pure? They did not pray for God to send revival they prayed for God to start the work in me. As in the psalm, as in the great psalmist hymn written by J. Edwin Orr, Search me, O God, start the work in me. Lindsay, if you get a copy of one of the hymn books at the back, you can sing on a company later, Search me, O God. It's so appropriate. Because this is the whole key to revival. And it happened in a church of Scotland, just like the one in... The, yes, it will be in the Redemption Hymnal. Anything good is in the Redemption Hymnal. Yeah, you come and sit down. You can be confident it will be in the Redemption Hymnal. Oh, by thy spirit, Lord... Do this again, we pray, through thy empty vessels who cry out to you. And from these teachings, from through Duncan Campbell, we pray groups will start all over the world of revival prayer. Not that they should say, God send revival, but they should say, start the work in me. 
Are my hands clean? Is my heart pure? And this is so awesome. This is so wonderful. Duncan Campbell declared this. I think again of those people in the Hebrides. How they longed and how they prayed and how they waited and how they cried from Isaiah 64. Oh God, rend the heavens and come down. And all the time, God, Lindsay and Pam, was handling them. Remember we read in James about letting the work of God to perfection. Be patient. Let it do a work in all of us. Let us not think of one being higher or lower than the other. But say, Lord, do the work in all of us. All the time God was handling them in the plural. All the time God was dealing with them. And the process of cleansing went on. Until the moment came when angels and archangels looking over the battlements of glory cried, God, the vessels are clean. Wow, the miracle can happen now. This is the conviction of revival. Not the charismatic revivals which start with countdowns and they see people falling down all over the place and all these manifestations are carrying as a sign of revival. No, 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 no. Are my hands clean? Is my heart pure? Lord, start the work in me is the key to revival. And he has not changed. God, the vessels are clean. The miracle can happen now. I believe, declared Campbell, that with all my heart, it is the deep conviction of my soul and they are ever gazing over the battlements of glory waiting for a prepared people. And we say this to the Kirk at Witton. Are you saying this to your local Kirk or church wherever you may be in the world? That they are waiting over the battlements of glory. Are you ready? Did we hear in the local kirk here in attending for seven months? Are my hands clean? Is my heart pure? Did we ever hear the teaching of God's perfect work to soulish perfection? Not once did we hear the preaching of the blood. Not once. Forgive us for bringing this to your attention. But God has intention to bring revival to Whithorn. And is looking over the battlements of glory ready for a prepared people. And it is the same in your community too. Wherever it may be. Campbell continued, it is one thing to shout it, it is one thing to sing it, it is one thing to talk about revival, but give me a people on their faces seeking to be rightly related with God and when that happens we will soon know the impact of God realization in our country. Can this occur in Great Britain? Can we bring Great Britain to its knees? Oh, yes, we can. How can we? With the faith of the Son of God. But things are so bad. Things are so imperfect. Knife crimes increasing. Drug addictions increasing. Murders are increasing. But greater is he who is in me than he that's in the world than the God of this world that brings death. Can we have a church on its knees before God saying, are oh, my hands clean? Is my heart pure? Can we allow the Spirit to move upon the clean vessel? Campbell continued, now I'm not saying that the need is articulate everywhere, but the failure of man's best efforts or endeavours is apparent to all. And I believe the day is not far distant when, in a sense of desperation, when at the end of her endeavour, the church will cry and God will take it in hand, are we there? 
in the case of the widow, her knee became articulate. Those of you with us last week, we had the story when the oil stayed. We went through this in, in, with deep conviction and deep sincerity. Thy handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. That is all she had. Are we ready here in these days for God once more to rend the heavens? Will the angels look over the battlements of glory and say there is a prepared people? Are we there, asked Campbell. In the case of the widow, her need became articulate. She cried, O oh man of God, come. The situation is desperate. My two boys are to be removed from me. Remember the story. They had to be put into slavery because she could not pay her bills. God, come and deal with the situation. This was a youth problem indeed, declared Campbell. And the coming of God solved the youth problem. But the miracle had to happen. Is it going to happen? We know that God can give us, said Campbell, a great many things. But he cannot give us his best gifts unless we hunger for them. Are we hungry today in our meeting for God? For instance, he cannot make a man wise if he refuses instruction. He cannot save a man from his sins if that man wills to hold on to his sins with both his hands. He cannot make a man holy if he has not aspirations after a holy life. Is it not true, said Campbell, that the need of the Christian church today is just holiness? A people desirous of walking in the ways of God. It was once my privilege, continued this great revivalist preacher, to speak to a group of young people. What a joy it was to sit listening to their aspirations and their longings. What a privilege it was to speak to them about the power of an indwelling Christ. And I remember saying this, the greatest thing about us all is not what we say. It is not what we do. The greatest thing about us all is our unconscious influence. And that unconscious influence impregnated by the life of Christ. Oh, the power, the dynamic of a God-possessed personality. Let that loose and revival is at the door. A baptism of holiness, a demonstration of godly living is the crying need of our day. So if you measure the intensity of your desires, you will measure your capacity. Lindsay has just sung I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. The point of refusing to lust after the flesh, but lust after the spirit. God, declared Campbell, is not going to respond to a feeble, fleeting wish. Just for a moment, suppose that those boys of the widow, while holding the vessels under the spout of oil, were more interested in watching a butterfly in the sun than on keeping their eye fixed upon the oil. The chances are that most of the oil would have been lost. Yet, is that not the way many of us come to God? We long for revival. We are longing to see a movement in our own community, in our own church, hall or assembly. And we are crying, God send it. But heaven cries, is your eye fixed upon me? Get rightly related to me. I read in the Old Testament story of men who feared the Lord, but they served their own gods. 
Do we profess to fear him? But are we serving our own gods, our own interests? May God lead us into truth. Is there a hunger? Is there a cry? I've nothing, I've nothing save a sense of need. Bow in his presence and acknowledge it. And bring that vessel of honesty, sincerity and of true seeking after God. And the promise will be fulfilled. I will pour water, declared the Lord, upon him that is thirsty. Remember that revival has got to do with God's people. I sometimes say at the risk of being misunderstood that we do not pray for revival in order that its souls may be saved. But souls are saved in their thousands when we have revival. When the thirsty are satisfied, then the floods come on the dry ground. If you want revival, get right with God. You are not prepared to bring the last peace. For God's sake, stop talking about revival. Your talking and praying becomes the laughing stock of devils. Is it about time we got into the grips of reality. Are we thirsty? I hunger and I thirst, declares the hymn writer. Jesu, my manner be. Is that your prayer? asked Campbell. But further will you notice that this woman was inspired by a great confidence. Yes, the man of God was there. And could she but get into touch with him? The miracle could happen. The boys could be left at home and the youth problem solved. She got in touch with him. I'm not sure how. I cannot say how difficult the path was. But of this I am certain she got in touch with him. And through getting in touch with him, the miracle happened. Why is the miracle not happening today? We are in touch with churches. We are in touch with missions. We are in touch with conferences and conventions for the deepening of spiritual life. I would to God we could get into touch with him. The miracle happens there. Yes, that was her confidence. And she set before him. And again quoting the hymn writer. Faith. Mighty faith the promise sees and looks to God alone, laughs at impossibilities and cries, it shall be done. Next week we'll be covering the secrets of holiness, our example from the Hebridean revival. Lindsay is going to come forth and sing the wonderful hymn that came through revivalist J. Edwin Orr. Search me, O oh God, and let this be our prayer today. Let this be our revival today. Lindsay, come forth and sing this with all that you have. Let the people hear us and let the spirits move upon them. Lindsay. Yes, let this be a prayer. It's a wonderful, wonderful revival hymn based on Psalm 139. Search me, O God. Search me, O God, and know my heart today. Try me, O Lord, and know my thoughts. I pray, see if there be some wicked way in me. Cleanse me from every sin and set me free. I praise the Lord for cleansing me from sin, 
Fulfill thy word and make me pure within. Fill me with fire where once I burned with shame. Grant my desire to magnify thy name. Lord, take my life and make it wholly thine. Fill my poor heart with thy great love divine. Take all my will, my passion, self, and pride. I now surrender, Lord, in me abide. O oh, Holy Ghost, revival comes from Thee. Send a revival, start the work in me. Thy word declares, thou wilt supply our need. For blessing now. 